It's time for us to look at yet another NFT creation platform, and this one is called Highlight. Always remember to do your own research as some of the tools that I'm about to show in this series are very new. All right, I'm very excited for this one because I'm not so familiar with Highlight. It seems to me very new, although they might have been around for quite some time. However, I recently discovered this platform. And actually, an interesting way how I discovered it was because of my previous video using Rodeo. So Rodeo is this great um, artistic platform for creating a social network, essentially. Uh, and on there, you could have actually created a highlight or linked, as I would say, your highlight portfolio. And so I checked out what highlight was and I thought, let's make a video on highlight. Let's actually try and create um, a collection. And just to remind you, I've created this video series testing out different platforms to find out which platforms I love to use so that I can use them in the future for my NFTs that I want to create. And hopefully this adds some value to you as well. I guess let's jump right in now. I know nothing about Highlight, but I have to say I am excited because it looks pretty nice. It looks very clean, the platform. So here we have a banner on the dashboard. We got some of the more uh, well-known, bigger collections here as well. So we can see that this is reflecting like a marketplace, right? All the NFT collections that's on the blockchain. So that's pretty cool. But our purpose is to see from an artist's perspective if we can create an NFT. So right here at the top, there's a create button, also a sign in button. But I'm going to see what will happen if we just click on create. Nice. I see we have a few different options here. So we've got an open edition and obviously each one has its own description going with it. We have a limited edition, a one of one, which we are technically interested in, right? We want to create a one of one. Uh, but I do see they do support generative art um, for code-based artworks. Pretty cool, code-based artworks. And then you have also series. Uh, yeah, so then also manage collection, of course. We don't have a collection, so I guess we're going to follow this route. One of one. Uh, one of one are single tokens. I think that is fine. Let's go ahead and create a one of one NFT. Okay, so after saying I want to create an NFT collection, it does tell us to sign in because it says we're not signed in and we're required to be signed in. I think it could have been communicated a bit better beforehand, but nevertheless, let's go ahead and sign in. Nice. Now that I'm signed in, I can actually start creating the one of one, which is cool. Uh, they actually redirected me straight back to my creation process. So that's nice. And uh, here we just have a nice form that we can fill in. Uh, we can upload some uh, media files, so PNG, JPEG, some video files, and of course some audio files as well, which is quite cool. That's unique. I don't often see just audio files. Now, we do have some artworks to upload. And again, if you haven't seen this before in the other videos, this is the artwork I'm going to upload. It's called Enjoy Life, and I've placed this test uh, just on top of it, so I know that this is the test one. I'm going to drag and drop it in there so that it can start uploading. And then I want to fill in these fields. Now, immediately I notice the collection's name and then description. And as I went down, I just saw that there's a mint date and all sorts of stuff, but there's not an artwork name. And then I actually read more on this one of one and I saw a collection containing a single NFT, right? A single, a unique NFT uh, with its own artwork and metadata. So we need to analyze and see if this is the right uh, edition type for us. I see that this is not the contract itself because here we also get to select a standard. So very unique. I haven't seen this really before, but um, here we get to create the one of one like we saw. We can create a limited edition or we can create an open ended uh, edition. What is a bit confusing to me at this point is I have the artwork here but I don't get to give the artwork a name and description, although here I get to give the collection a name and description. So I'm just going to follow what they are asking me to do here. So I'm going to add the collection's name, which is Daniel's Lino Art, and then a description. And then I get to select the token standard. Now, I think 1155 is great for if we have uh, more than one, right? Uh, like batches of this one. But 
I might as well go for the ERC721, seeing that I want to have a one of a kind um, NFT. I have to say at this point, there is a bit of a technical understanding that you need to know, right? You need to know what an ERC721 is, an 1155. Uh, you need to select the right edition type, uh, which is of course needed. But although it's not that straightforward, if you have never made an NFT before, this could be confusing to you. So a bit more customization, which is good, right? If you uh, know what these terms are, they do add lovely descriptions. So you can obviously read, but yeah, it's not as straightforward as just clicking and making the NFT. Okay, so we can now select a blockchain. And this kind of validates the fact that you need to know a little bit more about blockchains is the fact that you can actually select a test network here. Now, I personally think that from a developer's point of view, this is a nice platform where they allow you to select a test network. But if you're a beginner, you might not understand what these test networks are, right? This is not as simple for a beginner to just create collections. Um, unless they have, of course, just a bit of context around it, like this video. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically we can select a test network or we can select one of these other networks and we of course get the Ethereum main network, a um, few of the others as well, Polygon main network, which I might select just to be cost effective. So let's go ahead and select the Polygon main network. However, I do like the fact that you can select from various blockchains. So that's pretty cool, but we'll stick with Polygon. Now we get to select a sale type. And the fact that we get to select a sales type means that we probably have to mint it still after this, right? So we'll get there. However, I see these are the types that we have. We've got a free mint, a fixed price, a English auction, and a Dutch auction. So this free mint is pretty interesting. Let collectors mint for free and earn 50% of highlights mint fees. I have no idea how that works, it sounds like a very cool perk. And I must say, at this point, this platform is surprising me with, you know, there's a lot of these extra cool little things that they do differently from other platforms. So uh, I must say it's very interesting so far. I'm going to go for this free mint. And um, yeah, let me go for the free mint. And then we get to set the date that we get to mint or start the mint. I actually want to set it to a time where it already started. So this is GMT plus two. Doesn't seem that I can change it. So let's try and change this to maybe 10 a.m. I think 10 a.m. should be uh, more than sufficient and we should be able to mint it. I wonder if we can even select the fifth. Doesn't look like it. Okay, cool. So now when is it gonna end? I think let's make it the 18th. Well, actually, let's make it the 14th Valentine's Day, even though we're just going to mint our one NFT. Okay, cool. So now contract, select uh, an existing contract or create a new one. Uh, you own and control all the contracts. So I guess this is our new contract, right? That we are creating now. And we have even more advanced options. So uh, you can add a gate, uh, add traits, edit the uh, payout address and so forth, royalties. So let's click on this just to see. So we can add some trades in here. We can add the payout addresses, minting options. There's a lot of customization. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of customization. It's pretty nice if you want to have a detailed, you know, a controlled experience having your collectors mint, I would say. It's not as straightforward, but it has a ton of configuration you can set. I think I'm happy with this and I'm gonna click on deploy. Great, I do love when a platform shows me what's happening. So our metadata is being uploaded to our weave, which is nice. And then we get to sign with our wallet and do a payment with Polygon. This is actually pretty affordable to deploy a contract. And yeah, now we just wait. Like I said, it's nice to see the steps because some platforms choose IPFS to use as their decentral storage. And I see that Highlight is using Arweave, which I like. Okay, cool. And then is this it? Manage the collection. 
view the project page. I want to view the project page. Okay, so this is now our project. We can see the image, Daniel's Lino Art. It's a bit confusing for me because I think I might have selected the wrong option. Um, you know, this is the artwork, but I would love to have called it uh, Enjoy Life, right? Because that said, it's the collection's name. Tiny bit confusing. However, it's just because I selected the wrong option, I guess. Anyway, here we can see that the mint closes in seven days. So what's nice about this is if you do need a mint page, if you want to create a project and you actually want to send someone the mint page, I think that's very nice that highlight gives you this mint page that so you can just send to your collectors and people can actually go and start minting over here. And like we can see, we've got a few days left and we have one to mint. Okay, so that's pretty cool. What is this 2.3 polygon? So half of this fee goes directly to the creator and the other half helps us run our service. Okay, so even though this is kind of like a free mint, uh, there is a, a tiny fee, I guess. I'm not so sure, we're gonna try it out. Uh, but there's also a banner we can add or we can click on manage collection. We're gonna go there and see what this is all about. Very cool. Oh, there's actually a few things we can do here. We can set the banner. Here we can see the public sale. We can edit the sale. Okay, so it is actually now set to this Freeman that we selected, right? So this is kind of what this is all about. I guess you can make the sale live or not live. Mint, sell this token for a fixed price. That's also cool that you can actually change it midway. Um, and also change the mint dates. Very nice, very, very nice, very customizable and kind of feels like your personal, um, really like your personal mint page, because it is, right? I think that is pretty nice and neat how Highlight has made this. But let's give it a go. Let's actually go back to this mint page and mint this one of one. Let's actually support Highlight for building this magnificent uh, platform. So let me go and click on mint and I'll mint my only artwork because I want to see how smooth this process is too, right? And there we go. It looks like our mint was successful. It asked us if we want to subscribe. We're going to say no. Thank you for now. Congratulations. You minted one iteration of Daniel's Lino art. Okay, cool. I would have liked to call this um, Enjoy Life, right? Because this is the actual artwork's name, but that's fine. I guess maybe I can set that in the settings too. However, this is pretty cool. This is pretty neat. And um, it definitely didn't cost that much because I had nine point something um, polygons. So yeah, I'll have to check on that. However, I think it's pretty nice. Here I can go and view my tokens now. It's a very uh, clean application. I have to say, this is my profile and here I have my artwork. Now, I've got a few of these ones uh, just because of all the tutorials that I've made or kind of test runs, right? So that's pretty cool that Highlight shows you all your collected NFTs. And this makes me realize that Highlight is way more than just a platform to create an NFT. It actually can show you all your NFTs that you have collected with your wallet. It allows you to create NFTs and these beautiful mint pages that you can kind of manage behind the scenes. Although very technical and you kind of need to navigate your way around, I think once you get used to this and you are an artist and you're very interested in, uh, you know, putting your artworks on the blockchain as NFTs and you really get comfortable with the blockchain, I think this is a great platform uh, to have it all in one place where you even get that mint page. So let's go ahead and actually rate our experience today minting an NFT with Highlight. All right, so for the ratings, again, no competition between these platforms as we are just purely looking at what we experience today. These platforms might add features in the future and change, so this is just at the current time of recording. Okay, so for highlight, when it comes to user-friendliness, I found it user-friendly enough, but there was also some areas where I kind of had to second guess read up twice and I even managed to make the collection's name, the actual um, artwork's name, but I guess that was my fault because it was a one of one. However, um, having that many things to be able to set 
So the the fact that it is very customizable also makes it not the easiest platform to use. Therefore, I placed it on easy to use, but also moderately clear, right? So it is clear enough and it's easy to use enough, but it is not the most uh, user-friendly when it comes to just straightforward creating a collection. You need to read up, you need to plan what you're going to do. Okay, so as for customization, we saw that it was really um, highly flexible and, and customizable, right? We even got the mint page, which we could customize and set things on. And I think, again, like with all these platforms, I'm seeing a trend. The more customizability you have, the more things you need to know about, like um, what is the sale types you get to set and all those things. So that, um, you know, extracts a bit from the user friendliness, but, you know, adds value if you need to go in that fine grain detail. So I've placed it on highly flexible and touching incredibly flex flexible. It's not completely in the incredibly flexible realm because it's not, uh, you don't have to code anything and that it, they don't give you this codability, right? Or at least from what I experienced, um, I might be wrong there, but from what I experienced was they gave us enough customizability to do almost anything we wanted to without touching a line of code. So that's where I place it for customization. And lastly, will I use it myself? Well, this column is personal to me. And so if I have to think if I would use Highlight, I might consider it. And the reason for that is if I have to ever create a collection with that level of detail and a mint page and mint phases, I personally will then go for Third Web, seeing that they have SDKs and I can add different a code in the actual contract, but that's just personal and subjective to me because I'm a developer too. So whenever I need to go that level of detail, I'll do that. But then highlight could be perfect for someone who doesn't have that coding knowledge, but still wants that level of complexity. That's why I placed it at might consider. Again, highlight might have SDKs that I'm unaware of, but I will have a look into that in the future. However, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And I really enjoyed my experience testing out a new platform. As always, I hope it added value to your life. And then I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Cheers for now.